Hello, hello, this is Postgres FM, episode number 98, right? 98? Yes. Yeah, and this is Nikolai Samakhvalov, founder of Postgres AI, and my co-host is Michael Christofidis, founder of PG Mustard. Hi, Michael. Wow, that's the first time you've attempted my last name, and you did great. Okay, oh, yeah. Thank you so much. I practiced all these years. You know. <laughs> so what's the topic today? Yeah, so this was your suggestion. I think it's a great one. We've been meaning to come back to it for a while now. It's it's full text search. Why did you want to talk about it? Uh, I think it was in our list for a very long time, mm-hmm. maybe from the very beginning, because it's a huge topic. And when we built that, that list, uh, I think PG Vector already existed, but only a few people paid attention to it, unlike today. So since we didn't manage to discuss full text search before this AI boom started last year, I think we should maybe compare it a little bit. And since I used full text search a lot in the past, I still remember many features it offers in, in, in Postgres. And I think it's interesting to not only discuss like usual discussion uh, embedded embedded full text search in Postgres versus Elastic, but also it's interesting to discuss embedded full text search embedded of Postgres versus PG Vector extension and similarity search, or maybe not versus maybe together. And it's this is interesting, but I think time is changing and evolution is very interesting. And today people probably pay less attention to full check search, but but they at, le- at least should know uh, what capabilities it can offer, right? And let's maybe start from use cases and discuss functions, features, FTS, full text search provides in Postgres. What do you think? Or maybe yeah. we can talk about some historical aspects. I also can provide some overview of, of what, what, was, what was happening in Postgres and not only in Postgres. What do you think? Features, use cases, history, what's, the, what's better? I. Actually, I don't know the history that well. That would be awesome to hear a tiny bit about that. And then use, I'd love to jump onto use cases where you yeah. see used most commonly, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, actually, we can combine. I now see how mm. we can do it. So if, for example, we r- roll back to first web era, web 1.0, so to speak, like 25 years ago, and when Google was created, right? Because Google is kind of... It's a search engine originally, yeah. right? And it solves the problem of finding proper texts, uh, most relevant texts, right? And uh, at that time, before Google already, other search engines were created, mm-hmm. obviously. And full text search capabilities were originally called T Search 2. Actually, I remember this contrib module I was seeing at 2005, maybe when I first started working with Postgres created by Oleg Bartonov, Theodor Segaev, and then Alexander Korotkov joined them. They created it because they were building search engine originally. They helped building search, quite big search engine. And then they incorporated many of their works into Postgres, and this became T-Search2 contrib module, which later was merged to the core, and you don't need to install extension so it's already in core right but interesting thing that it was before social networks and so on but if we look at how it's built it's like it has a lot of things for example you can search uh, you can for example exclude some words and by default uh, it excludes some words it's called dictionary which is like in postgres full text search terminology dictionary is a program it can process input uh, somehow transforming it. So stop words, it's a, just exclusion of various articles, for example, and so on, which we probably don't have any meaning, so we can just exclude them, that's it. Then we have a snowball, which is a stammer, so it removes the endings, and it's super fast and it's super simple. So we can, for example, runs and run, it's like kind of the same word, so S should be removed, right? And then a more full-fledged thing we can ask to join, uh, to use some uh, real dictionary, 
usually ice spell, which is used also for thesaurus, like it, it can give a lot of things, uh, but it's usually slow, requires some memory. And all of these things are configurable in full text search, and they were configurable in Matthias Vector 2 uh, originally, and it's great. But if you think about the task, the use case, what we want to try to solve, we want to present user some information which is most relevant, right? What is most relevant? The user has some query. I want like recipe with, I don't know, with uh, some eggplant, for example. He puts eggplant. If we have like, for example, food recipe website or system knowledge base, and then we it, it we just removing stop words, removing like normalizing words. We can just filter, right? But filtering is just one thing. We also need to somehow order, maybe, right? And present only the most relevant. What is the most relevant? Maybe these words are most frequently used in these documents, right? Uh, like repeated many times, for example. And this is quite basic idea. Like if the word is used many times, it, it's considered most relevant. Now, like confession, I never use this. Why? Because I'm from different era. I'm from Web mm -hmm. 2.0, where most relevant meant something else because it was social networks. It was like also time matters a lot. Like if it's fresh document, like fresh blog post or something, it matters a lot. But Postgres full text search lacks this, like, and it's hard to build together. There is special index RAM. I mentioned it many times already. Maybe I need to revisit finally and think like maybe it still ha can be used because if you are on self-managed Postgres, this type of index can be installed as additional extension. But uh, original full text search can order by only this TS, uh, TS rank, right? It's called function TS rank. And there is another function which also considers uh, positions and distance between words. I think like density or something like not density, but the closer words are the better ranking uh, score score is right but for me it was always nonsense to use only these word positions and so on like i couldn't imagine how i can use it because i always needed to take into account time and also sometimes like things like likes reactions comments if this post is very heavily discussed it's it's very important right but back to history we know there is BM25 and also the, there is like this TF IDF. Uh, the idea TF, it's the term frequency, inverted document frequency, right? If mm -hmm. some document has this term like word mentioned many times, it's good for this document, right? And if in general, this term is mentioned in, on our whole database, it's, it's a whole data set. It's mentioned not very frequently. It's also good for our document because it means that uh, it... Like it's exception in, in terms of frequency, right? So that's why inverted document frequency. So it means that for such thing, we need to analyze the whole data set. Postgres full text search doesn't do it. It's quite hard to maintain such type of thing, but I think if there are some attempts to have it in Postgres, so maybe some extensions ex exist, exist. And if this is what Elastic uses, right? But there is another also approach. And back to 25 years ago, Google, why Google? Why did Google win? Because it had page rank. If we think deeply about this, I, it's already from Web 2.0 idea. Because page rank it takes into account uh, real, it's kind of social network of documents. I would say it takes into account uh, links, right? So interactions. We are not alone. And this idea is super powerful. I, I'm curious, are there any extensions which implement this in Postgres and how it would, could be implemented? This is super interesting. But this is a big power. Like if we have links, uh, we the value this document more. And I think it, it, like it's there are good algorithms how to solve it uh, with billions of documents, of course. It's, there are papers written. Anyone who studied search engine theory, of course, or... There is there is a from Stanford course from Stanford uh, mining massive data sets very very good material where I studied this page rank and other algorithms like closer to machine learning on big data sets. So idea is like links right, 
you multiply by mat some matrices and you have some good index uh, and you can use it again postgres doesn't provide this and elastic doesn't, doesn't provide page rank i guess right but it's good because we start taking into account um, not only word positions right full text search in postgres only word position for single document and and that's it but since full text search in postgres is uh, inside relational database system we can have other columns right we, and we can have we can have indexes on them so yeah. for example likes or something like timestamp when document was created we can construct sql which takes into account all these things it will be just slow right maybe because the idea that the fastest query is always like index scan or index only scan is the best right but when we have full text search we have other columns and we have b trees probably on them combination is a problem right this this is the key, the, the problem but there are there are uh, things how to, you can solve it but uh, like let's maybe discuss a little bit later i mean b gist and other extensions but uh, originally the com combination of different factors uh, in the ranking task this is the the problem right later google and others they started uh, taking into account social network activities if some document is mentioned on twitter for example or fa at facebook it happened like 15 10 10 years ago this document uh, everyone who dealt with search engine optimization knows that uh, if you have a lot of likes in social networks your document goes up in in positions but if we deal with our system we can take into account interactions like that because it's just some data we store and, and that's it and uh, today it's not that bad usually if you don't have uh, tens of billions of records or just just millions or tens or hundreds of millions it's not a huge volume of data so you can rely on multiple indexes and let postgres decide what to choose based on statistics this is very similar to what we discussed remember this yeah yeah very similar Limited. because i it, it triggered uh, my problems with full text search i had trying to incorporate it to social media projects because you have two indexes which to choose because you cannot choose them together well like you can you can have bitmap in the scan and, and but it's already slower but are, most likely postgres will choose just one index and won't like for example over time or or full text search but based on statistics and then on the fly it will apply either sorting in memory or filtering in memory right yeah exactly so that's where the inefficiency comes in yeah yeah so this is like historical overview we had uh, like simple stop words stemming uh, dictionary it's not simple by the way it's a lot of functionality mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but ranking based on like just our opinion about like opinion about uh, how this document is relevant to your query not considering relations or other th things second thing is i think page rank and postgres doesn't have it and the third thing is taking into account various factors like time and likes and so on but also there is similarity search now and we know search engines use it for long right so so well, well actually i want to go back to i think your example is re remarkably useful so you, you, the example you gave of searching a site of recipes for eggplant or let's like add that maybe we'll write maybe we're not super sophisticated and we type an eggplant so we can for example yeah. so the an would count as a stop word we don't want to search for all refs like we don't want recipes that, that say an a lot to, to rank highly so that's getting rid of the stop words we might want for example to do something slightly more we might want to rank recipes that list eggplant in the title we want, might want those to score higher than ones where it's yeah. listed in the in the document more times. So that's that's like an interesting uh, additional challenge. Secondly, it might be let's say a user generated recipe site, and we might want to factor in how many likes a recipe has got or how right. recent it is or something like that. So there's like all these even in the simplest example you can think of exactly. these days, well, it great. can get com oh Zooming. I've got one more. Yeah. What? You might also, if it's user-generated content, you could have British people or like people using aubergine instead of eggplant, and you also want those to rank Similar. highly. So, 
Yes, right. exactly. So synonyms already, uh, it's already a bridge to discussing uh, full text search versus similarity. Let's keep it as yeah. the, the last item, right? But let's, the, the great, great attempt to zoom. This is good. Let's, let's do <laughs> or diving into deeper. So let's slightly mention how you know, full text search works in Postgres. So after this pre-processing, uh, we just discussed like removal of stop words and you can control it. Uh, like good thing about full text search in Postgres, a lot of customization options, like a lot. You, for example, can control stop list and stop considering N as a uh, stop word, right? Mm -hmm. Or you can, for example, remove accents. There is a special extension on accent, right? Additional pre-processing. So like in French, for example, with yeah. lots of... Yeah. Or there are uh, support of multiple languages also. Mm -hmm. It's also good. So you can start considering additional stop words, for example, remove it if they mention too often, like all, almost all documents have them, let's remove it because it doesn't make sense to use them, right? Then like stemming or, or dictionary processing, this I spell dictionary processing. So in the end, we have a set of normalized words, right? And then we build an array. It's called TS vector. Again, also vector, by the way. So it's a set of words with positions already normalized in a normalized form. But basically it's a, just an array of texts, right? Yeah. Or like words or lexemes or whatever the, yeah. Yeah. For example, I, I forgot also to, men to mention hyphen uh, words. Uh, uh, I, I think uh, you also can control it. Uh, as I remember, it was many years ago. I think you can choose either to consider them as a single one word or to split them to multiple words, like two two words basically, yeah, first cool. and second, or or together. Like um, you can put a pair of separate words and whole word as hyphen, right? A total three already, right? So that if people search one or the other, they still get that result back. Right. For example, shift left testing. Shift left, if it's a hyphen, you can put both, not both, shift left and shift left as three separate entries in your test Lexings, vector. Yeah. You can control how Postgres will do it, building test mm -hmm. vector. Also, you can concatenate test vectors so data can come from different sources. For example, we have title, we have body yep. subject or body like for example if it's email or if it's blog post title and content text mm -hmm. mm, author uh, how you name it that doesn't matter and you can concatenate uh, two test vectors or you can concatenate it before that uh, with additional space right and then build test vector so test vector is just a, a array of texts and you can uh, explicitly store it consuming space or you can rely on function because we, then we need to create index on it originally it was gist and gist it was i think it was the work of of hallerstein in berkeley very long ago in the early 90s maybe or when and it was not finished but the guys who i mentioned uh, bartonov and sigai they just saw this uh, directory in postgres source code as they say and understood this is exactly what they need. There, there's also additional thing. Uh, so gist is generalized in uh, generalized search tree. So it's uh, similar to B3, but it's abstract. Uh, that it, uh, you can use it for many data types and data operators. Mm -hmm. Right. For B3, it will be numbers and operators less than uh, more than and equals. And it's just one axis, right? R3, it's two axis, and, and then you can have it for arrays as well. In this case, we talk about operators intersect, includes, contains, is contained by, right? So, so and overlaps, right? Overlaps is at, at, usually. You can actually redefine it and use your own symbols, right? It's, it's actually, first you define function, then operator. It's, since Postgres is very extendable. But historically, it's at at or less than at or at greater than, right? So these operators, uh, you can define how to deal with them in terms of this B3 like index structure. So it's balanced uh, with many, many children in, on each node. 
and uh, balancing is automated, everything is automated. So when the guy, then this fox found this Hellerstein's work, uh, it was not finished and it was, wall is, was not supported. They mm. worked on that support, uh, supported wall. And then additional thing, we won't go deep because, because of lack of time. And I also forgot everything, but there's also thing like called signature tree. So to put our TS vectors to this structure, this additional concept of signature tree, you need to build signature. It's also defined. So these signatures are, are placed into the leaves of this tree. And it's, it then search is very bit like, but with additional exclusion, which makes these days uh, gist option is not uh, popular at all. Recheck is needed because it's kind of, it's, uh, it's not certain this search. So I've, when, I've heard these called lossy index types. Right, right. So mm -hmm. if you check, with, this is what you do in PG Master, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, explain, analyze buffers, right? You, you check and see in the plan, recheck happened. If gist mm -hmm. was used, recheck happened. So let me close some gap. Query also processed to build a vector, right? But it's called test query. It's called test query, different data type, but it's also similar, also a bunch of words, also with pre-processing. You can have different pre-processing. You decide how to pre-process, right? But usually it's same as for test vector, for test query, same pre-processing, also remove stop words, remove uh, normalize words, and so on. So, and then our uh, question is, let's find everything which include, incl like we need to find documents which include everything we asked for in our query, right? Uh, and rank so, them, but yeah. Yeah, and rank also additionally. Normally. So mm -hmm. there, is, there is approach to put it to trees, uh, to such values, uh, to leaves. And then it searches similar to B3, but instead of like greater than or where to go greater than or, or less than, right? Instead of that, uh, it checks if this vector is contained in that vector, right? I mean, this array is contained in that array. And that's why you need to go left or right or something like this. So it's, it's called Russian doll tree because it's like a Russian doll, right? Uh, like somehow RD tree. So by the way, it's also in B Berkeley papers, this term RD tree somehow. So it's, I think uh, in, it, it was invented before uh, Bartonov and Karako. Probably, maybe they influenced, I don't know. But uh, then, like, obviously, it's slow in terms of search for large volumes of data because of this recheck. And uh, this is not, not how Google and others worked in terms of, like, not even Google. Google, we know page rank is a bigger thing. But eventually, Bartonov, Sigaev, and then Karatkov, they created uh, Gin. Gin is generalized inverted tree, where we have a list of terms, our words, and for each list of... Uh, documents right all uh, tuple ids uh, tuple city ids i think where mm -hmm. this is stored but not least there are b-trees there actually to, for faster search mm -hmm. so it's it means that gist is good only at one thing update speed just versus gin yeah right right but gin uh, it was improved there is also fast update option but anyway default option for us is gin Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, comparing TS query and TS vector, Gin is good, like uh, search is fast, but order by TS rank, right? Which is not probably good. So back to the uh, comparison, uh, back to these use cases you started mentioning. Let's, let's think mm. about them. First, you said, or it was second, uh, let's distinguish subject and body, right? For example. Yeah, or should we rank? Should we should the the presence Wait. of an ingredient in the, or, or word? Let's yeah, words because we we know that people aren't going to be searching in our like search bar for random things. Like may, th maybe there's like a few different things they might search by. The most common is probably ingredient. Should recipes that list that in their title rank higher, or but it be weighted right. higher, even if they only mention it like a few couple of times later on it's i feel like personally i'd be expecting those to rank higher than ones where it was like a small ingredient or only needed a small amount of it maybe maybe the amount of the ingredient matters a lot maybe that's easier right right so it's definitely good uh a good thing to uh, to to 
to want, right? If a word is entitled, it means that uh, maybe a whole article is about this, right? If eggplant is entitled, it pays attention more to this. Makes sense. So for, for this, there are two bits which you can use. Two bits means, means four options, like, right? So there's a function set weight. And mm -hmm. when you combine information from multiple sources, from title column and content column, for example, body column, you can say set weight A to first one, set weight B yeah. to second one. And there are only A, B, C, D, uppercase, and that's it. Because again, two bytes only are used for this. And then later in your query, you can also say, I pay attention to this or to that. Actually, you can use it for filtering as well. And this is what I did. But originally it was created for ranking. I don't remember details, but set weight function you need to search uh, in documentation. It should be there and you will find out how to, like, it's a very strange concept. Why only two, two, why, why only four? Because of two bits only. They had only two bits to, to spend for it. Maybe it should be more. But I used it for sometimes like, we search only in subject, right? And I say, okay, only a category. It's called category, maybe. It's embedded inside TS vector. So you can skip using it. It's there, but you can just ignore it in search. But in, in different time, you can say, I want to search only category A. a it means only title search. You don't need to build two TS vectors separately. However, you could, right? Got it. So like if, for example, going back to our example, I search what's clearly like an author name and we can maybe on the application side, we're doing a little like a quick, um, maybe we're doing something first to try and categorize what people are searching for. If it's an author name, I could then send that through to Postgres as like, uh, let's only look in this category. Right, right. But, and again, it, it originally was created by for ranking. I just uh, didn't use it. So I cannot explain sure, how sure. But documentation, of course, uh, explains how. Mm -hmm. Right. So good thing to mention also now we have generated always thing right Gener generated columns yeah they are stored but you don't like postgres maintains them automatically so i think generation of ts vector is probably a good thing to use together with that functionality so you you, ha you have author title body of blog post and then ts vector can be generated based on some expression which hmm. puts different categories to different sources of data again up to four and uh, generates and puts ts vector there and then you have index on it right mm -hmm. or you can define a trigger i i in all my life i define triggers for for this and also there is another option not to store it at all and just use index on expression gene and then you big expression maybe with these uh, set weight we just discussed but in this case, it's good in terms of storage, less thing to keep in memory, but mm -hmm. it's, it might be bad in terms of, uh, I don't know, sometimes uh, you need to deal with TS vector directly, right? And then if it's, uh, if you have only expressional index, then you need to construct this expression once again and, and to deal with it, right? So I don't like this approach somehow because it limits your, in terms of what you can do with such records. So if you don't store it, you need to build it on the fly to deal with it, right? To, to additionally somehow analyze it or so. So I, I always like, I always prefer to store them, although they can consume a lot of data and the toast and so on. Sometimes I just put them to separate table, understanding that then I will need to join. For me, it's easier to create a t trigger and uh, use a regular column, right? Sure, sure. But uh, if you think store it or not to store it, uh, it's good to think uh, what you will do with it. And uh, if you yeah. want to deal with TS vector in different ways, uh, then keeping it stored only in the index itself, it's m maybe not enough and maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. it's good to put it to table. But to put it to the same table as a column, and rely on toasting and so on, or maybe to allocate different table and like one-on-one -on -one relationship, one-to-one. -one. It's a good question. Again, depending on workloads, right? So, okay, th this we covered. Uh, can you remind me of other use cases you mentioned? Uh, 
Well, I think it's all, I consider this kind of one use case, but I guess, mm -hmm. uh, I guess there's like all the complexities that you may or may not want to support. One that I didn't mention, but probably we care about is what if somebody spells eggplant with one G? Yeah, typos. Yes. For this, there is PGTRGM, tri trigrams. Trigram, oh. yeah. Oh, extension, which actually also uses RD3. Gin, actually. Gin these days. I already forget about it. Forget about gist, uh, very rarely used. So gin, right? So we have some text, right? Or some, basically, trigrams should be, uh, should work for words, right? We have word, and we suspect maybe there is a typo there. So it appends one space on one uh, side and two spaces to different side, and then just split for three, three words, th three letters, three yeah. letters, yeah. three letters, right? And then we have array again. Right. Vector. Mm -hmm. Vector, right. And then mm -hmm. uh, the question is, which is the most, the closest? Closest means like most of overlapping. Most uh, of uh, members of array uh, are the same. Might be not, not all of them. And if it's just a one letter typo, it means three, three, three members of this vector will be different. Or two, ah, nice. Or yeah, how yeah. many? Right. Well, e it wouldn't include e g g. It wouldn't include g g p. And it is that the, they're the only two. In this case, I think possibly right. just they're the only two. So, so three grams. Uh, we're just mm -hmm. shifting, shifting, shifting. Also, right. We we don't just split. We're shifting. So we start position first. First is for example space, then two letters, then second, first letter, second letter, third letter. Shift, 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 and we construct uh, array out of it. And then uh, if for example, you just mi uh, missed, uh, for forgot one letter. Mm -hmm. Overlapping will be huge. Distance is very close. Yeah. Similarity is distance low, similarity is high. If you, for example, uh, uh, mixed positions of two letters, just swap them. Mm -hmm. Also huge. This is yep. interesting. This is interesting uh, idea behind trigrams. And again, we use uh, other R RG3, nobody does it, or GIS, GIN. GIN, we use GIN, so we can find uh, arrays which are closest. Overlapping is higher. That's how we find uh, words which actually present in our document data set, right? And then they say, you probably thought about this word. You know, one thing, like in the past, I remember we maintained the list of words with usage counts probably using some statistics provided by TS full text search. TS I don't remember details, but uh, you can build the list of words with stats and then you can store it in a table and then use three grams on top of it. And uh, you need the triggers to maintain this or you need to refresh it periodically. For example, mm -hmm. if you just imported a lot of documents which use new words, this list of words already outdated, you need to rebuild it. And then uh, uh, this uh, trigram approach worked. Uh, you 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 have input words. You you check the table and it works. Now I think we don't need it, right? It's automatically maintained this list of words. Is that remember? Or we just don't care and build an index and then take whole input. That's how I've seen it used. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there are there are several ways to use it, and maintaining this additional table probably still makes sense, right? List of words. Terms. Do you think it would then speed up queries, or what do you think the benefit is? Speed, speed you lose speed here probably, right? Okay. But accuracy is is good. Accuracy, yeah. yeah. This is okay. This is great, but I think the conversation you mentioned earlier, like the comparison of full text search versus semantic search in the yeah. current climate, uh, and something I wanted to like introduce was the the whether the use case suits false positives or f suits false negatives better. Like, I think it's really difficult to to come up with a solution that, that does neither, but often you see kind of slightly biased towards, like, is is it better? Like Google, for example, what PageRank was really good at was making sure it didn't miss a website that was clearly very relevant to your right. search term. And so it was very, very good <sighs> at avoiding false negatives. But you did often, especially in the earlier days, get quite a lot of false positive. Like you get articles that you didn't that didn't match your intention, at least, even if it did match the words. But the recipe example, maybe we don't care so much about. Like if you miss one great recipe, but you get 
17 perfectly matched ones, that's still a good result. Maybe you'd rather that kind of way around on the trade-off. How I don't know how you see that and whether that's relevant. I see this uh, as many different small use cases. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For example, if, first of all, we... I, I remember your different use cases. This is what I mentioned as well. Like we want to take into account likes, comments, yeah. Yeah. timestamp, everything. It gives us ability to build very big query. And then we think, okay, but our full text search, gene in, single gene index is not enough, right? Sometime we can use B3 gist, for example, right? which allows us combining uh, these uh, arrays of text and regular numbers or timestamps in a single index. And this is good, right? And then we can have single index scan. Also, there is B3 gene, also yep. interesting thing, right? Also, there is RAM, which you need to install as a separate extension. But these two, B3 gist and B3 gene, they are included with re a regular contrib, contrib model. So with yeah. any Postgres, it's available. But... Yeah. In some cases, we want, like, I forgot to mention, Postgres also supports it. Well, I, I think functional web web search to TS query or something like this. It supports some small language of phrase search and inverted search. You can exclude, user can say, I want everything, but this word should not be there. Just minus, yep. right? Or put in uh, double quotes for exact match. Yeah, that's, that's this all great it means that you can user can control and in regular manner Google also supports things like that, right? So it means that you 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 want, for example, to see exact phrase uh, mentioning you know it, it's there and you you just can do it. But uh, then similarity search two <laughs> big use cases. For example, you mentioned synonyms, right? Uh, yeah. Someone. Someone uh, doesn't use word eggplant. There's another word meaning the same thing. Aubergine. It, how? It's honestly that's what we call them. Aubergine. A u b e r. I'm not going to try the rest. I I haven't heard. It. Cool. So if you want a, a synonym search, full text search supports it. You can, you, but you need to maintain it. You need to maintain the dictionary of synonyms, and the normalization process will um, will automatically all synonyms will be defined in, in, in our test vector and test query, it will be the one word we chose. So we can maintain synonyms. It's, it's easy. And not easy. I mean, it's, it's straightforward. It's not easy because it requires effort of maintaining synonyms, right? But uh, on the other hand, if we use PG vector, it probably puts both words in, like in this highly dimensional space very close, right? So, yeah. because meaning is the same. Hmm. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So maybe semantic search provided by PG vector is better here, right? Okay. Another thing is, for example, something is not working versus something is what is working. Not is a stop word, right? What do we what do we try to search? Something is not working. For example, my car is not working. Maybe not working, I should put in, in double quotes so not is definitely there, right? For exact phrase search. Or maybe I just need to use PG vector because it definitely will distinguish semantically that uh, not working and working very far in, in this highly dimensional space. So similarity is not good, right? Distance is, is not good. And if we are trying to find my car is not working, we won't find documents if they will be put uh, not high right in terms of ranking by similarity but also pg vector it de i think that depends though like i think that's contextually important and interesting because let's say this was a a, a car forum how many posts are you going to find about cars working great like realistically in a, in a, well it's in the it data probably set. was a bad example it was a bad example but in general sure, sure. inverted since uh, how full text search works in Postgres, in Postgres, it will remove not as a stop word. Yeah, yeah. And it's bad sometimes, right? Because it's opposite meaning, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. I didn't realize we, that. That's great. We might think about similar examples where removal of stop word basically leads to very bad, bad uh, ranking or filtering also. Yeah. 
like one that comes up quite often is like film titles or like band titles. If you put the in front of it, it could be a diff- completely different band. Or or some f- English is very, um, has very such example, a lot of such examples. For example, go on, go on, go, it's like goes, right? On is just some, so, so go on means continue, right? Yeah. Meaning is very different. Uh, if you just look at words, Separately, yeah. you don't get this meaning at all. And there are many such phrases, right? In many so, languages. Yeah. Uh, and uh, semantic search will capture this, the meaning, uh, and put it to vector, right? And then we use uh, approximate nearest neighbor search, ANN search. But it lacks many capabilities, like, for example, phrase, exact phrase search, or inverted word search, or uh, this categorization I mentioned. What do you think? Like, it's interesting. Should we use only semantic search these days? Or I think no? I don't think so, but only because I'm thinking of like some quite boring use cases where, for example, you're set, like I quite often think about software as a service applications, and let's say you might want you might be looking up a customer, and you might want to look up them by email address or by a right. name or by like. There's a few different things you might want to look them up by, and you might like want to provide your users with a single search bar to to look those up. Or you can I'd... have tags, for example, if if based on what I just described, overall like these uh, vectors or arrays of text text arrays, mm-hmm. you can you can use gene gene for tag search, putting all tags for a document into single value, single column, right? All the, all the tags denormalizing them. I first did it, by the way, using GIST in 2008. It was my, uh, the topic of my first talk in the US I presented and uh, 2008, can you imagine? And I was, we were building this, uh, we put, it was what so, was social media and or all, all tags were stored in single column instead of EAV approach when you have separately words like tags, terms can be phrases. In one one table, documents in another table, and between them, uh, like relationship table, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and and then you need to have three table joined join like two joins all the time. And, and in terms of storage and speed of search, it's ter- it was terrible. It, it remains terrible. EAV entity attribute value approach. But here you can put uh, all tags, and full text search can provide you exact search by tags versus if you put everything to vector probably you how we will do we would do it we probably would uh, just take uh, author title body and then okay we have tags and we append probably tags colon this comma this comma this right and rely on our vector search that it it will be used somehow, but we ca- we lose control, right? If it's full text search or we have multiple indexes, we can reliably find proper documents which definitely contain some text. This right? might be my answer. I think if I care a lot about reducing false negatives, like it would be really bad if mm. you search the exact name of a customer in my application and we didn't show it back to you if we couldn't find like so sometimes the problem with the index types for vector search is they can have false negatives results that should be the correct answer turn out to then not be returned in the answer so and also we remember that uh, vector search since dimensional dimensionality is super high it's mm-hmm. approximate nearest neighbors. So of course, so that's what I'm trying to explain. Right, yeah. But full text search is uh, k nearest neighbors or something like filtering. It's exact, right? Yes, precise. So let me rephrase you: If we mm-hmm. want to present user just single input with a button, fine, right? Probably similarity search is enough, right? Or if we want to have some of this language like exclude this word or exact phrase search in double quotes or we have advanced form search form like choose the offer date range or something similarity search is not enough and probably we will need not only full text search but also uh, like faceted search with filtering additional like things 
some things we can put to full text search index, as I described, but not all of them. And it's interesting that now we have similarity search, now we have full text search, uh, typo correction, basically, but it requires effort, as I said. Other indexes B3 doesn't go away at all, right? And mm -hmm. then we can probably build some system which can be very powerful in terms of you, what you can do with it. And uh, if we consider a particular example, for example, we I know you used uh, PostgreSQL.org and Google search, yeah. right? Two search engines, right? And PostgreSQL.org search is remarkably uh, weak. Yeah, is it it's true? not great, is it? It seems it doesn't use full text search or maybe it uses it in some strange form because I don't see all power full text search provides. I don't like, maybe we could look into details because I guess uh, source code should be available. But uh, in general, it can be improved and uh, things like just using Postgres own full text search will, will improve it. And uh, we could find more things, right? But if PG Vector would be installed, <laughs> It would be even better, right? Because uh, we could combine sem like semantic search and full text search phrase. I think what f for me for me uh, full uh, full text search is good in terms of these capabilities like uh, this language like phrase search and negative exclusion, mm -hmm. and also c categories. Yes. So as someone who built a lot of systems using full text search and recently built one system using PG Vector and similarity uh, based on. Semantic similarity, right? Semantic similarity. I now think it's pro probably be, uh, proper time to start adding full text search capabilities also, and uh, it will be tricky and interesting how to properly combine them. I saw simple examples, trivial examples, like how to combine them. Let's find 50 documents using semantic search, 50 documents using full text search. That's it. Or, or let's find 1000 using full text search, then uh, re-rank them using similarity and leave only 100 and then define some additional ra uh, ranking and leave only 10. Quite weak examples because I don't, I have no idea how pagination will work, right? And also what about speed? So for me, it remains open question how to look back at old functionality provided by full text search and bring them to similarity search. So it's a yeah. super interesting topic. It depends on the use case, right? Like, if so, I'm thinking about your bot for Postgres AI. You don't need to paginate, right? Like, if you you're returning the results mm. in a in a chat based yeah. interface, there, it, yes. So it's an interesting, like, we maybe don't depending on the use case, maybe don't always have the same constraints we're used to having, like via web search type interfaces. Well, I I think yes and no. We don't need it now, but I I already see. Uh, Building the bot, I follow my own behavior using Google, when using Google. Yeah, okay. And there, I definitely sometimes go to page number two, page number three. But not page 20. Like, pagination maybe is not that big a deal if you're only looking at the first you're three probably pages. probably right, yeah. yeah. But speed, speed will suffer. But anyway, like, yeah. I, I think I should combine full text, start combining with full text search because sometimes I want exact search. I know exact phrase or function name. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I want to exclude something. I, I mean, bot already wants to exclude something. Uh, it happens. And also, I think about two-phase search when we search for more money. Maybe, indeed, pagination is not needed. We I think about the idea to search a lot of items, like 1,000, 2,000 items, but then analyze snippets like in Google using, again, automat automated analysis using LLM and leave only a few and for them, we need to expand because I always open every relevantly looking snippet. I just click it and open a new tab and consume whole document, right? But we cannot consume whole documents for 10 or 20 items. It's it's interesting there. But full text search, I think, is about to return. Because again, sometimes I want like search by title for reliably. I know like it was mentioned in title or something. Or authors, also author. Yeah. So, yeah. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Exciting Good. times. Yeah, maybe it was uh, slightly messed in terms of content uh, structure this time. 
but uh, I still have questions and I don't like examples. Let's just 50 semantic, 50 full text search. Do you want uh, to hear items. from people? Should people let us know how they're currently? Yeah, maybe there are it? better ideas already. Uh, it's, yeah. I think it's very evolving area, right? And maybe there will be more systems where capabilities will be combined because we know in, for example, in Google, it, combines a lot including similarity and you know, like full text things so. yeah so if you're doing this in postgres already combining the two techniques um let us know yeah how exactly what are the details it's super yeah yeah good nice one cheers nicolai thank you